Good morning. My name is Drew Williams Clark. I'm the Director of Equitable and Sustainable Communities at the Metropolitan Planning Council. Before we start, everyone here needs to select the globe icon that says interpretation here in Zoom and then select English. We'd like you to do that now so that we can make sure that the interpretation happens for everyone. On behalf of the Metropolitan Planning Council, the Chicago Council on Global Affairs, and the City of Chicago, I'd like to welcome you to the first of a seven-part event series on We Will Chicago, the first citywide plan in more than 50 years. Each event in the series will feature a panel presentation of international and local city experts, along with participant polling to provide feedback and input on the plan's draft policies. The events will occur each month from June to November and feature international and local leaders. Today's event speakers features a speaker from Dubnica, Bulgaria. Bulgaria is a country located in Southeastern Europe, bordered by Greece, Turkey, Romania, Serbia, Macedonia, and the Black Sea. It has a population of around 6.5 to 7 million people, of which about 9% identify as Turkish and about 5% identify as Romani or Roma. The city of Dutnitsa is located in the southwestern part of the country and has a population of about 40,000 people. The most common language in Bulgaria is Bulgarian, which is the language today's speaker uses. We've arranged live simultaneous interpretation between Bulgarian and English today. With that said, we do want to note that language is ever-changing, evolving, and context-specific. The interpreted terminology used today may not fully reflect the nuanced and fully accurate meanings of the words or phrases in English. We hope you will be patient and understanding with this interlingual and intercultural dialogue. We're eager to hear more about Dubnica today and about the other international cities during the rest of this virtual series. Be sure to register for upcoming events at www.wewillchicago.com. Now I'd like to introduce Heather Parrish, Executive Director of the Albert Pick Jr. Fund and longtime community development strategist who will be our panel, panel moderator today. Heather? Thank you so much, Drew, for that kind introduction. And thanks to all of you for participating in this discussion online today. Today's panel presentation and workshop will focus on the housing and neighborhoods pillar for the We Will Chicago Citywide Plan. We Will Chicago represents an incredible opportunity to create an inclusive vision for the city that encourages neighborhood growth and vibrancy while addressing long-standing social and economic challenges. At the end of June, the city will release the draft framework plan. It will include policies and objectives focused around eight pillars, which represent the topic areas on which the plan focuses on improving conditions and opportunities. Today, we will focus on one of the pillars, which is housing and neighborhoods. As we all know, having a safe and affordable place to live is critical. Your home and neighborhood not only shelter, but also the opportunity, not only offers shelter, but also provides the opportunity to lead a healthy and enjoyable life. This event will dive into the objectives and goals that are proposed as part of the Rebuild Chicago plan provide an opportunity for new ideas and dialogue with other global cities, and let participants provide input on some key recommendations by way of an engagement tool called Menti. I also want to make everyone aware that I'm going to be intentional in how I'm speaking today, as one of our panelists is hearing all of our remarks through simultaneous translation from her native language into English. So I ask that everyone be mindful of this as well as they present. Before we get started, we'd like to honor the passing of a leader in the housing and community development field here in Chicago. Janet Smith, a longtime professor of urban planning at the University of Illinois at Chicago, made her transition from this world this past January 17th. As co-director of the UIC Voorhees Center for Neighborhood and Community Improvement, Janet was an engaged and fierce activist researcher who fought the good fight alongside many community organizations, such as the Coalition to Protect Public Housing, 
the Developing Communities Project, and the Chicago Housing Justice League. Janet's work also spanned internationally, which a lot of people don't know, and mostly in Switzerland and Ireland, where she facilitated an exchange program for scholars and studied the social housing models of both of those countries. So when I heard that this panel was going to feature Bulgaria's social housing model, I immediately thought that this would have been the perfect panel for Janet to moderate. So I'm gonna do my best to stand in in her stead and to bring her spirit into the virtual room. She was my dear colleague and friend and a mentor to Drew and countless others. And so we'd like to just observe a moment of silence right now in honor of her memory. Thank you. We also want to thank Voorhees Center co-director Yitai Zelalem for joining us on today's call. And he was for many years, he worked alongside her as her partner in justice. So thank you for being here. So that we can all engage easily in the discussion. Here are a few housekeeping points for today. We have enabled the Q&A function here on Zoom. You can find it in the bottom portion of your screen. We ask that you use the Q&A function to post any questions so that we can easily access them. This event also features live closed captioning in English. So please click closed captions here in Zoom to turn the English captions on and off. We'd also like everyone to know that this event is being recorded. We will share a link to the recording and any relevant resources in a follow-up email. So keep an eye out for that. This event also features a workshop with an opportunity to provide feedback on the goals and objectives for the housing and neighborhoods pillar of We Will Chicago. So please try to stay until the end of today's session if you can. We have a pretty tight agenda, so we may not get to all of the questions that are posted in the Q&A. However, after this event, we will send out answers to all questions that we receive as part of the event follow-up. So without further ado, uh, let's meet our esteemed presenters. Our first presenter is Juan Sebastian Arias, who currently works for the Office of Chicago Mayor Lori E. Lightfoot as a Deputy Director of Policy. There, he manages strategic policy and place-based initiatives across housing, neighborhood development, and food security, from equitable transit-oriented developments to vacant lots to fair housing. He has over 12 years of experience working to advance racial equity and social justice in cities through policy, research, community engagement, and cross-sector partnerships. Our second presenter is Marisa Novara, who was appointed commissioner of the Department of Housing by Mayor Lori E. Lightfoot in May 2019 and was confirmed by Chicago City Council in June 2019. Believing that housing is a human right, Commissioner Novara directs the city's efforts to create equitably distributed affordable housing across Chicago's 77 community areas through policies, development, and legislation. And then our final presenter is Desi Slava Ivanova, who is the chief expert of European projects at the municipality of Dubnica. She has experience in the management and coordination of more than 10 projects for the municipal government implemented under the operational programs of the Republic of Bulgaria, co-financed by the European Union. Through these projects, the funding from the European Union and the national budget, she helps address critical infrastructure and social problems in Dubnica. So Juan Sebastian is going to first provide an overview of the We Will Chicago plan with an emphasis on the goals and objectives developed for the housing and neighborhoods pillar. And then Commissioner Novara and Desi Slava will provide a brief presentation on their housing related initiatives. And then we'll have a discussion that I'll moderate. So Juan Sebastian. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Heather, um, and good morning, I still think it is, to everyone. Again, my name is Juan Sebastian Arias, uh, Deputy Director of Policy here in the Mayor's Office, and I'm excited to get to share a little bit with you all about We Will Chicago and the work that the Housing and Neighborhoods Research Team has been doing. So 
if we go to the next slide, I think uh, we're all, um, I'm guessing we're all aware that, again, that WeWill Chicago is the city's first citywide planning process uh, since 1966, uh, with the goal of charting a, a, a better future and a vision uh, for a more equitable and resilient Chicago. Um, the work has been guided by a set of principles that I'll talk about in just a second. Um, and throughout the process, we have been working from a, a beginning, starting from a, a, a place of acknowledging uh, the history of Chicago, the history of uh, structurally racist policies of past uh, investment decisions, and then also uh, think about how to position residents to grow and succeed together in the coming decades. So just to share a little bit more about how we have structured or the framework behind We Will Chicago, um, to begin, uh, we're founded, or the plan itself is founded on two principles, equity and resiliency. Uh, equity uh, at the city of Chicago, we define as both an uh, outcome and a process uh, that uh, in the end provides people and communities with access to resources and opportunities so they can thrive. Resiliency, uh, we also see as critical and define as the ability of an individual or a group to thrive despite any stresses, any obstacles, or any setbacks that might come up. The next layer of how we structured We Will Chicago is around um, these uh, five themes and eight pillars. So here on the slide, you see uh, all the pillars, which uh, you can sort of consider the chapters in a book or some major quality of life indicators um, that we organized uh, the We Will Chicago round. That includes housing and neighborhoods, which is the focus today, but also arts and culture, environment, climate, and energy, and others. We did through the course of, uh, uh, over the course of the last year, as we've been working in the research teams, we did add on an eighth pillar on civic and community engagement, acknowledging and recognizing um, how critical, uh, that that is a critical cross-cutting uh, goal and, and theme that was coming up across all the other uh, research teams work. So uh, what is uh, a citywide plan or, or what does this plan actually help us accomplish? Uh, again, uh, We Will Chicago sets forth uh, uh, a vision, uh, a community defined vision and goals for the city's future. And uh, we see it, uh, we are planning for it to uh, be implemented in these various ways by aligning uh, budgets, uh, major projects or policy initiatives around the goals and objectives that have been developed ensuring that there's more equitable development across, those, across the city, creating standards for public decision-making, uh, informing land use and zoning decisions, uh, and et cetera. Now, to help situate a little bit on the timeline or the work that has been going on to date so far, there have, uh, uh, there have generally been, uh, or there are three uh, public outreach phases as a part of We Will Chicago. We're entering from the second to the third uh, right uh, this month or at the end of this month. Uh, but to give a little bit more background, uh, this work behind We Will Chicago all started uh, back in 2020 with some initial community conversations um, that helped, I helped us establish and identify what are gonna be the principles, the themes and the pillars. Um, I don't think I mentioned much about the themes yet, but just to give you a sense of those, uh, some of the major themes that we um, that we work to um, uh, that we strive have been striving to embody through the process include uh, historical uh, reckoning and acknowledgement, uh, a systematic impact of equity impacts, and meaningful community engagement. That's just to give you a, a, a few examples. So, phase one was all about uh, identifying these principles, themes, and pillars. And then in phase two, which has been the bulk of the, uh, bulk, the bulk of the work so far and where we are uh, just about to wrap up now uh, has been around uh, establishing research teams made up of volunteers and community groups from all uh, across the city who would work together over that, uh, over that uh, year uh, plus to craft goals, objectives and policy ideas. Uh, we actually, one thing that I'm very, uh, that, that, I, that I personally liked a, lot of, liked a lot about the process was that we opened up an open, transparent application to any Chicago resident to join as a volunteer or to be a funded community partner to participate. Um, throughout that time, we also did additional engagement. 
uh, and have been working to incorporate that feedback into the goals and objectives that I'm about to share um, uh, in just a little bit. What comes next uh, for the rest of the year is that we are uh, going to launch a summer of broader public engagement to get even more uh, public feedback and comments on the, the draft plan and its goals and objectives. And if we go to the next slide, I believe we have a, a little bit more uh, details on, on what this is, where we are right now in the rest of the year. So again, we're um, getting ready to, at the end of this month, release a framework plan, uh, the draft framework plan. Uh, over the course of the next several months, we will be doing this broader uh, uh, phase or broader summer of engagement. Uh, at the very end of the year, we will incorporate all that additional feedback into the plan itself. And then in January, 2023, we are taking the, the framework plan to Chicago Plan Commission for formal approval and adoption. Uh, also right now, we are starting to, um, we are starting to uh, plan for how implementation of all of these goals, of, goals and objectives and policies uh, will look like and what it will take. Last, I think uh, I already mentioned the summer of engagement, but we just want to plug it, uh, just uh, do an extra plug for it. Uh, you can find uh, uh, the summer activity or schedule of activities up at wewillchicago.com slash calendar. Uh, we're going to be out, are there going to be uh, city representatives out at public events, at street, at pop-up neighborhood events, at street festivals, uh, uh, conducting surveys and getting additional feedback on the framework plan itself. If you have uh, any additional event opportunity ideas that you would like to see We Will Chicago uh, uh, present at, please please, please do send those ideas to us. You can email us at wewill at cityofchicago.org. Great, and thank you, yeah, okay. If we go to the next slide, perfect. Um, so this is really just to give you a bit of a preview, a snapshot of, of what this, what every, uh, what the framework plan document itself is gonna look like, um, as well as some of the surveys. Uh, maybe just to share a little bit more of the process behind the research teams. Uh, we, uh, as, I've, uh, as, I, as I've mentioned, the research teams each started by uh, uh, looking at or uh, grappling with some of the, hist the, the hist Chicago's history related to their specific pillar, um, things like uh, uh, unpacking the practice of redlining or uh, past uh, discriminatory housing practices and policies. Uh, also looked at data, which are included in the public document it's, uh, itself, uh, and then incorporated feedback into the development of goals and objectives, um, including uh, thinking or applying some equity tool um, analysis questions uh, throughout that process as well. So I think that's it for the general background, and I will just do a very high level uh, a, a recap of the goals and objectives that the housing and neighborhoods research team that I also got to had the, uh, the, the pleasure of participating in developed. Uh, I believe the first goal and the third goal are gonna be more of the focus for some of the, the rest of the discussion and presentations. Um, but just to talk them through uh, relatively quickly, the first goal uh, is uh, to preserve and increase affordable quality and accessible housing choices for all. And you can see some of the more specific objectives that are underlying this, such as expanding housing assistance for historically marginalized residents or uh, developing a wide range of housing units affordable to residents at all incomes in all 77 community areas of the city of Chicago. The second goal that the research team developed is to prevent Chicagoans from being involuntary, involuntarily displaced. Uh, and you can see um, we also identified uh, historic, some historically marginalized communities uh, to pay a particular um, attention to in, in preventing displacement. Some of the objectives here, just to call out one, uh, is to, for example, increase protections for residents and institutions in neighborhoods with rising rents and property values. Now, the third goal that the, that the research team developed uh, is to attract and retain residents and increase density to strengthen neighborhood vibrancy. And that's especially, um, especially on the south and the west sides of Chicago. Uh, the, some objectives under this one include focusing future growth and density in and around transit hubs, key commercial corridors, 
and anchor institutions, and also to enhance uh, public spaces, schools, parks, uh, et cetera, uh, in underserved or historically disinvested communities. And then last, the fourth goal that uh, the research team developed uh, is to invest in Black, Latino, Native American, Asian, and immigrant community areas to create safe, healthy, and livable neighborhoods that provide basic needs and provide amenities, services, and jobs. And a few of the objectives here are around increasing access to healthy food and health and, and healthcare uh, in, those, in some of these target community areas, and also to create a welcoming environment to foster a stronger sense of belonging in all 77 communities. And I think with that, uh, my presentation here is, is uh, completed. Great, thank you, Juan Sebastian. We're gonna turn it over to Commissioner Novara for her remarks. Great, thank you, Juan Sebastian and Heather. It's really great to be here and share a little bit about how the Department of Housing and the We Will Chicago effort really intersect. And um, I'll jump into the first goal. And you know what's great is that we, you know, we work together to craft these goals. And so they really are in line with our mission as a department. So if you go to the next slide, um, goal one to preserve and increase affordable quality and accessible housing choices for all. And you know, when we get into the detail of this goal, it says um, preserve and maintain existing affordable housing across all 77 community areas. And that's a really important point. That's that's actually in our vision as a uh, as a department that we think fundamentally that someone who needs a subsidy to live affordably should have just as many options as someone who doesn't need a subsidy. And so the way that we are living out this principle, goal one of the We Will Plan, um, is demonstrated here in um, a map of our low-income housing tax credit awards from that was announced in December of 2021. This was actually our largest uh, funding round ever, uh, $1 billion. It's more than double what we had been able to do in past funding rounds, and that was in part because of the Chicago Recovery Plan dollars that came our way, but you'll see that it's 24 different developments across multiple neighborhoods in the city, 20 different community areas actually very purposefully selected so that we had a range of opportunities for people. We had our very first um, investment in Native American focused housing. Um, we had um, an old school that will be transformed into uh, housing for people leaving the criminal justice system, lots and lots of ways that uh, the projects that we push to fund here meet the goals of um, goal one of the We Will Plan. Next slide gives a little bit more detail. Uh, so as I said, more than 1 billion in investment, more than 2,400 housing units. And this is a really important part. I'll show you a map on the next slide when we get there, but um, we were very purposeful in tying this to our goals to connect people to transit. So 18 of the 24 developments that we funded in this round were equitable transit oriented development or ETOD. And what something I'm really, really proud of is that 12 of those 18, that's 67%, were on the south and west side. And that's not something that um, we have been able to do in the past. What I, We worked with a group called Elevated Chicago to actually analyze since we put in place the first ETOD ordinance as a city in 2013, where did people make take advantage of those incentives? And what we found was that 90% um, since 2013 of transit-oriented developments were on the north side, West Loop, near north side, uh, as if you know there were no transit or metro options uh, or high frequency bus corridors on the south and west side, which we very much have. And so, um, so we're very proud of this. And I'll show you a little bit more about that. The other thing uh, that we were purposefully we were purposeful about in this round was to seek uh, black and brown developers as leading the development team or in a joint venture as part of the team, so that we are addressing as well uh, Chicago's profound racial wealth gap. Next slide. 
Um, so this this map um, just pulls out in particular the uh, 18 ETOD uh, developments that we have announced funding for. And again, you can see that 12 of those 18 are on the south and west sides. And we're really excited about the ways that this connects people to transit uh, and, and redevelops communities. Next slide goes into goal three. So goal three, I'm going to continue the ETOD theme here actually across both. And um, in this category, which is attracting and retaining residents and increasing density to strengthen neighborhood vibrancy, especially on the south and west sides. Um, so for this one, this is both a we are doing this already and we have more upcoming to do on this on goal three. And uh, what we're doing already, what you see here on the slide as an example, uh, this uh, was known as the Emmett Street Apartments. They just had the, um, the grand opening last month. It is now the Lucy Gonzalez Parsons Apartments. This is 100 units of affordable housing. 50% of it is public housing on a city-owned lot on top of the Blue Line uh, transit stop in Logan Square. It had been an underutilized surface parking lot. We think this is such an incredibly more important use uh, in this gentrifying community to now have 100 units of affordable housing. And, and it's something that um, we were very excited to be able to support financially. So this is an example of how we are increasing density to strengthen neighborhood vibrancy and to allow people to stay in their communities as they become, in some cases, much more expensive. The part of this that I want to talk about that is still to come is that we have been working with many partners on an ordinance that would also make kind of the backbone of our legislation make this really our, our standard. So next slide talks about the uh, Connected Communities Ordinance. And um, this is an ordinance that would really, I'll, I'll talk about it in kind of three categories. One is that we think of it as growing the economy by creating more homes and businesses near transit, more places for people to live near transit. Um, two, making streets safer for everyone near transit, uh, whether you're walking, biking, rolling, riding, any of the ways that we all get around, uh, we want to make the space everywhere safer and especially the spaces near transit should be um, our most pedestrian friendly. And finally, the third bucket that I'll talk about here is encouraging more diverse and affordable housing in every neighborhood. Chicago uh, has a great deal, uh, a very profound level of racial and economic segregation. And a lot of that has to do with where people can afford to live. We wanna tear down as many barriers to that as possible. And we have some plans uh, to do that in this ordinance. Um, so what this really does is uh, it encourages investment in low income communities. It encourages affordability in high income communities and it makes safer streets everywhere. So this is the work that um, is in progress and definitely will make for a stronger goal three um, if we are able to move this ordinance forward with city council, which is very much our hope. So I'll wrap up there and turn it back to you, Heather. Great, thanks, Commissioner Navarro. That was a really great presentation. Um, so I have a couple of follow-up questions. One, um, are there any other regulations that need to change to support the work that you just described so well around strengthening density around transit-oriented development and anything else on the south and west side that we need to be mindful of? Uh, absolutely. Actually, we're we're in the middle of we've had a bunch of meetings with black and brown developers, contractors, et cetera, and then with lenders and investors to try to understand what are the barriers to seeing a higher presence of black and brown developers in the in the entire development team in low income housing tax credit developments, for instance, and also in smaller developments that might be, you know, single family home for affordable home ownership or um, two flats or things of that nature. So we're, we're trying to really get at what are the barriers? Um, what are the barriers that the lending community faces from taking on what is perceived as a higher level of risk? What are the barriers that developers themselves face? 
um, if they have limited capital and um, you know may need to continue to partner long after they actually know exactly how to do the deal, but they just don't have the balance sheet to provide that comfort to a lender. What are the ways that we can try to solve for those barriers and get more folks where we want them? Great. And then my second question is around um, the fact that housing being accessible for people with all abilities, it seems like it's been a perennial struggle. And why do you think that is? And what do we need to do differently to get that right around accessible housing? Right. Yeah, I think there's a there's a couple things. Some is the creation of the actual units. And um, that's something that we're actually looking at in the ordinance that I mentioned, which is how do we um, make it easier and less expensive for developers to create accessible units. And a lot of that comes if we make it easier for people to create no step units on the first floor, um, then we make it much easier for those units to be accessible to a range of, of people and a range of abilities. So that's something that's actually a component of our ordinance. It's a component of something we're looking at for additional dwelling units as well. So that if, we, if we're encouraging people to build coach houses in the back of their yard, can we make sure that it's as easy as possible to make them on grade uh, so that those can be accessible to an aging family member or to someone with, a, um, with mobility challenges. The other piece is um, just connecting the people who need them to the units that exist and that we're creating and doing a better job of that, right? Who, who are the folks who have relationships with folks who have varying levels of need on accessible housing and how do we make sure we're connecting to them when those units come online? And it's something we work with um, Access Living and other groups to, um, to really try to improve that every day. Okay, great, thank you, that was perfect. So we're gonna turn it over now to um, Desi Slava. And I've been asked to remind people to please select English on the interpretation button that's in Zoom. It's absolutely necessary that you select that in order to hear her remarks, okay? So Desi Slava, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I like very much and I have uh, heard a lot. I feel closely connected to Chicago because uh, this uh, uh, city uh, was chosen by many of my uh, fellow countrymen and my uh, friends uh, and uh, fellow citizens from Dubnica as their permanent home. And I'm happy to be able to share the experience of my municipality in solving uh, the housing problems of uh, socially disadvantaged uh, uh, people. And from what I could understand, Chicago is facing similar problems, uh, although uh, at a much larger scale compared to our uh, town in providing uh, affordable housing to socially disadvantaged people and uh, marginalized communities. So it, uh, it is a pleasure to share with you that our municipality managed to uh, achieve uh, great results in this uh, respect, thanks to a project which we implemented in uh, between 2011, uh, 50, 2012 and 2015. And I had the honor of being a coordinator in the management team of this project. It was uh, financed uh, uh, by 85% uh, a grant from the European Union and 15% uh, also um, a gratuitous help from the state budget. This was a pilot scheme which was initiated by the European Commission, uh, which uh, gave the main uh, directions uh, for developing this scheme. The idea was to create a few a few pilot models for creating, uh, providing housing to socially disadvantaged uh, citizens. Our municipality uh, won the right to participate in this uh, project thanks to the model which we uh, developed. And uh, what is uh, peculiar about this model is that it uh, had an integrated project. Uh, uh, construction of housing was uh, coordinated uh, combined with some uh, measures uh, 
which was uh, the reason why we were awarded this grant and uh, we had the chance to implement this project. We offered a packet of uh, social measures uh, which helped us uh, um, identify the most motivated uh, representatives of the target group who uh, would afterwards uh, become good uh, owners of these uh, housing uh, houses, not just to provide houses to a certain number of people, but we needed people to be motivated to take care, good, take good care of those uh, uh, houses and apartments and to work towards their social integration. And uh, in the implementation of each of the projects, uh, under this project, we used an integrated uh, uh, approach. We uh, combined uh, construction with a package of social measures. Uh, we, um, we relied heavily on uh, some of our partners uh, that were NGOs, uh, and these were the, the local NGO which works um, with which targets uh, a roma community which is called amala french and um, through our project we uh, created 150 um, uh, flats apartments uh, with an average uh, with an average uh, area of 66 uh, square meters and the total of the whole investment is about five million dollars and from this uh, um, amount, we used about uh, 3.7 million for uh, the construction. And, uh, and we also had additional investments uh, in uh, infrastructure, which is $830,000. And we also um, uh, used uh, uh, money for the parallel social measures. Uh, the project was a great challenge to our uh, municipalities because it was a very large scale uh, construction on municipal land, which used to be a military unit in the past uh, uh, with uh, completely destroyed uh, underground and above ground infrastructure. And we managed to build what a very beautiful neighborhood we built 11 two and three uh, story residential buildings uh, two two family houses and two single family houses uh, and these provided a total of uh, 150 homes which were fully equipped and furnished with the basic uh, furniture and appliances needed for a household uh, through other donor programs of the uh, European Union and the Bulgarian state, we managed to build uh, the accompanying infrastructure of, for the underground communication, for, for plumbing, uh, for electricity. We also built new, new streets completely and we landscaped the quarters and we even uh, created a new bus line so that these people uh, can uh, uh, easily move to the center of the town. In parallel uh, with the construction of the housing, uh, we um, started implementing the uh, social measures uh, package and uh, we uh, tried to use the individual approach here as well. All people from the target group were subjected to a social analysis and uh, they had uh, social assessment and the investment was directed uh, uh, mainly towards the improvement of their situation and the social integration of people who have lived on the margin of social exclusion from society. These are homeless people uh, who lived in very poor uh, living conditions, uh, parents with sick children, um, uh, underground parents, uh, large families and others. Uh, the, uh, the emphasis here in this target group was um, uh, uh, belonging to the Roma eth eth ethnos, but we also try to f seek uh, social e equity. So uh, the most important thing was the, uh, the social position of the people who uh, made use of the homes that we provided. Um, uh, our team used, it, uh, used a special mechanism to select uh, the users so that we can be socially 
uh, equitable and all people who are offered uh, these services should be placed uh, in uh, equal, uh, equal conditions. We try to achieve sustainable development, uh, employment of the people in the target group so that they can have um, income and they, they can uh, uh, take care as tenants of these uh, homes. They were also given uh, uh, consultations uh, as, uh, as regards employment, uh, educational services, uh, also some uh, services uh, aiming at um, avoiding drop-off from children and a special uh, uh, package of programs for social services. Uh, the, the target group uh, of users uh, were uh, 1,080 people and 75% of them were of Roma origin and 460 people were identified as the most motivated, motivated and eligible were selected as uh, the tenants uh, of the homes that uh, we built. The selection uh, was made um, according to uh, uh, by a special uh, panel in which there were people from uh, the uh, city uh, house city administration and we aim for so uh, for transparency and social equity now uh, nine housing mediators and nine educational mediators worked with the target group and they uh, worked as mediators between the uh, users and the different institutions that were involved in uh, providing the different services services and we also created a municipal social undertaking, uh, which um, um, was responsible for maintaining the, uh, uh, the the housing, the housing, the houses, and the terrain of this newly created neighborhood. Nine people from the target group uh, were housed there, and. Uh, uh, these people were employed, and since they uh, live in those um, uh, homes, they are further motivated to uh, work and uh, work towards the development of uh, the neighborhood. In conclusion, I want to say that we had serious difficulties during all the stages of this project. Uh, on the one hand, this was uh, the large-scale construction. On the other hand, we had the uh, difficulties, uh, both with the motivation of the participations, uh, participants in the group, but, and also with uh, finding understanding in uh, the community. What helped us uh, successfully fulfill our obligations was our well-chosen uh, partners, uh, who had experience in providing similar services, but also the understanding and cooperation on the part of the municipal authorities and the state authorities. What helped us also is that for all key activities under this project, we, we had engaged representatives of the Roma community who managed to very easily um, uh, involve people from their ethnos to participate in this project. Um, and finally, I'd like to state that uh, uh, through the implementation of this uh, project, despite all the efforts, uh, 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 with all the efforts that we um, had, uh, we helped our country uh, fulfill its uh, uh, commitment to the European partners uh, uh, because we uh, had a grant from the European Union and we are trying to ensure housing and uh, complementary interventions for the benefit of the socially vulnerable people. Bessie Slava, thank you so much for your, your remarks and helping us learn more about the social housing model that's happening with LIV. Um, couple of follow-up questions for you. Uh, one is that um, it's my understanding that the community center provides access to mediators and lawyers for marginalized groups, in, particularly in cases where they confront violence or other harms arising from social exclusion. I'm imagining what it would be like if the Chicago Housing Authority here provided free legal aid to black and brown residents facing employment discrimination, for example. Have you found 
that to be an effective strategy in reining in discrimination and other harms that have been done. Да, от това, което чух до момента от изложението на комисията. Even though in a much larger scale is facing uh, the same problems, uh, yes, uh, uh, we don't only provide mediator and uh, lawyer and legal services. Uh, we also provide a very complex approach in uh, working with uh, the people who will be uh, provided with these homes. Because uh, when we talk about marginalized uh, communities, uh, regardless of whether they are marginalized on the basis of ethnicity or other social issues. These are people who didn't have the chance with their birth to um, have access to good education, good job. They were deprived of the chance for a social, good social uh, realization. And this is uh, the role of the municipality and the community to help them and turn them into good citizens. And the expenses for such uh, type of um, services, because these are expensive services, um, and we offer these uh, services thanks to support from the European Union, but these expenses should be seen as investment in human resource and human capital, because this is how we prevent future problems with these marginalized communities. These uh, people will, um, uh, send their children to school and uh, when the, these children get a good education they uh, get education they have the good chance to become good citizens so we also prevent uh, a crime and uh, other problems that any community faces so this uh, this investment is uh, very worthwhile we were happy that um, it was given as a gratuitous help through the European budget, but otherwise I don't think any municipality could manage in this complex uh, uh, approach to afford this independently. But we need to uh, look for uh, chances and opportunities, and when we try to find the social uh, equality, in providing this housing, we have to take this into account that first, these people need to be motivated to uh, take care of the, of the home they are given. But at the same time, they need to uh, make the effort to turn into good citizens, uh, fending for themselves and looking after their children properly. Thank you. And then I have another question, and you've mentioned already twice, a few times now that the EU is involved in the financing of the project. And this is really an interesting model because you've got national as well as a federal um, financing model coupled with the EU. And so can you talk a little bit more about the EU's interest in this project? Um, and it's really um, particularly poignant that we talk about this in the context of the growing diaspora that's resulting from the war between Russia and Ukraine. Yes, this uh, financing scheme was first initiated by the European Commission and the main guidelines uh, which were later used to develop the projects were given by the European uh, Union and the European Commission, because in Europe and uh, in particular in Bulgaria, the marginalized communities, mostly from Roma community, from Roman uh, ethnic origin, are a big problem. And as you mentioned, the uh, ethnic minorities in Chicago and in the U.S. as a whole is a big problem. So, trying to find a solution to the problem with these communities, uh, trying to find them. Uh, to make them law-abiding citizens, to uh, prevent social exclusion, to include them in the communities where they live. Uh, this scheme was proposed so that um, um, we can achieve those things. And it was a pilot scheme for the whole of the European Union and our municipality 
um, uh, along uh, with Vidin and Devnia, two other cities, we managed to uh, to have such projects. And uh, the financing we got was indeed gratuitous, and uh, we, as a new member of the European Union, we um, we have the right, to, we are eligible for financing uh, under different problems uh, to solve different uh, infrastructure prob uh, problems and issues so that we can meet the standards of the European Union. But at the same time, uh, our uh, country also contributes to the budget of the European Union. And afterwards, this budget is distributed among all the uh, member states uh, on the basis of the problems that are identified. So this is the mechanism uh, that is used uh, uh, and how the funds are distributed. Because uh, this is the serious problem that uh, I mentioned that we need to solve with the Roma community. As for the, uh, the Russian-Ukrainian war, yes, uh, this is a very applicable model. Our country, since we are very close to the uh, hostilities, Romania and Bulgaria are the countries that are very close to this uh, armed conflict. We took upon our shoulders uh, a great uh, uh, number of the refugees from Ukraine. And I would say that uh, Bulgarians, who are famous for their hospitality, uh, welcomed the Ukrainians uh, uh, and took good care of those people in need. And uh, they were offered a similar uh, uh, package of measures, though not in this complex uh, uh, type. People were uh, housed in four-star hotels uh, along the sea, uh, the Black Sea coast. And they were all, uh, they all had um, their sustenance at the expense of the Bulgarian state. Uh, so we offered them uh, health service services. We tried to find opportunities to include the children in uh, kindergartens and uh, schools. The people who wanted to, uh, to be employed, they were offered employment opportunities through um, work uh, labor agents. So yes, indeed, in this uh, uh, case, we um, applied a similar model, which was uh, adapted to the situation. And in the context of the ongoing uh, hostilities, so we need to, to think about the integration, integration of these people into our communities so that uh, their work, um, uh, social work with them continues, because we need to start thinking about the education of the children and uh, the employment of these people. Uh, until now, Bulgaria um, is uh, taking all their sustenance, but at, this, uh, at one point this will be too much for our budget. So these people will uh, have to be able at one point to start um, working and uh, providing for themselves. Thank you. Thank you for your response. Uh, I think um, Commissioner Navarro is going to join. We're going to have a few other questions that we want to pose to both of you. Um, in get some dialogue going. So the first is around just talking about the importance of having a strategy or a plan in place that can help you push on objectives. You know, why is it important to have a strategy or a plan, particularly when we're thinking about um, objectives that are rooted in racial equity or ensuring access to housing? Um, I can start if you'd like. Um... I think my response encompasses both uh, a plan like like we will Chicago, a citywide comprehensive plan, and encompasses even at the level of as a department um, of, of the city of Chicago, what are our principles, what are our um, what's our vision? Because you there are so many decisions to be made. And if you don't have any fundamental principles to go back to. Um, it's easy to sort of say, well, sure, sounds okay, or, well, why not, um, without actually taking a moment to examine some of the things you very thoughtfully and rightfully put in place to say, well, let me ask this set of questions and see, does it actually fit in our goals? And, um, and if not, 
then I need to ask a whole other set of questions. Does this, is this worthy of making an exception? Um, do I need to make the hard decision to say no or that it needs to shift and, and so on, right? And I think the reason that that so often doesn't happen is that it's much harder to, to look at decisions in that way. Um, and so having, but having a framework and a set of principles gives people certainty about what to expect about you as a city and as a government uh, and, and means that the options that are brought to you are more likely to be aligned with the goals you've set forward. So in the case of, in my department, we did a racial equity impact assessment to determine how we were doing with one of our major funding tools, the low income housing tax credit. And in order to figure out how to, what we should do going forward, we had to actually examine what we have done to this point and pull apart the data by race and all kinds of other factors. And then in order to put it back together and say, how, what are the tweaks we need to make to go forward and better meet our goals? But if you're not willing, if you don't have goals um, and a structure, then it's very hard to know what to do with what you even find in a process like that. So I think it's about, really establishing your North Stars, whether it's as a city, as a department, as a nonprofit organization, right? Whatever the seat you, you sit in, what are the things that are driving you forward? What are the things you say yes to, say no to? What are the things you fight to shift? And, and that really helps to guide, you know, all those difficult decisions. And, and then we as residents can hopefully help to hold you accountable. Yes. With exactly. some of those things collectively too. So I, I, I like exactly. that response. Yeah, thank you. Leslie Slava, do you have anything to add around why it's important to have a strategy or a plan in place to help meet your objectives? Yes, I would say uh, in a kind of a joke that people are very impulsive when it comes to deciding their own uh, problems. Uh, um, many times they are under the influence of emotions, but when we talk about big communities and uh, work teams and countries and states, um, we need to know what our objectives are. We need to know what uh, uh, our resources are that we can use to implement our objectives and what is uh, the, 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 the route, the way to get to those uh, objectives. So yes, when we need to solve uh, important uh, issues uh, related to big communities, uh, whether in the case of Dupnitz or Chicago or a bigger community, we need a strategy, especially if we are looking social equity, uh, in particular uh, with, in the context of uh, housing policies, we need to consider all aspects uh, and look at it from the point of view of all uh, st uh, st stakeholders. Thank you. Um, next question is around the role of city and municipal governments. And what role do you think city and municipal governments can play in advancing these strategies? And in what ways can others contribute, especially around development and housing? went first last time, so I'm waiting to see if Desislava wants to go. Something, uh, I think uh, the role of the municipalities is of key importance because uh, when uh, problems uh, are uh, solved, uh, there is a social tension in the process and uh, the role of the municipalities uh, is very important because they know what uh, the mood of the people is. For example, we had uh, problems with uh, 
the understanding on the part of the people of the town why we are implementing this project but we also had problems with the, the motivation of the people who took part in the project but we had awareness uh, campaign and we managed to mitigate uh, this social tension and to achieve understanding on the part of all people in um, town. So the role of municipalities of, is of crucial importance in situations like uh, this one. And I would also like to add that when uh, there is work with uh, marginalized communities, it is a, a good idea to work with the formal and non-formal leaders of these uh, communities because uh, in the Roma ethnic uh, group, people do not trust uh, external influence and uh, the authorities so if their non-formal leaders uh, explain to them why something is done and why this thing is good for them uh, this uh, was always a well successful model in us with us great thank you that was really helpful uh, commissioner Mara, how would you respond to that yeah, I think the I think the unique power that um, government has is is sort of two things. One is that you can really set policy by uh, being clear about what you will and won't fund when it comes to affordable housing. Um, what you're looking for in the you know example I gave in my slides was our last funding round. We were very clear that we wanted to see proposals uh, that were across a range of market types, high income neighborhoods, neighborhoods that are experiencing gentrification, neighborhoods that have a long history of racist disinvestment. And we wanted to invest in affordable housing in all of those spaces. And, and that's the proposals that we got. And I think you have a real unique power in that when you have the ability to set uh, the policies based on what you're saying, here's what I'm willing to invest in. And, and it's incumbent upon us in government to use that uh, to, to set those things in motion. And then the other one, of course, is, is um, laws as well. So, you know, being able to change um, some of the city ordinances that we've had has been uh, one of the most gratifying parts of this role, you know, so to be able to say, wow, that really needs to change. Um, people need, for instance, more than 30 days notice if a landlord is not going to renew their lease. That's just not a recipe to land well on your feet if you're only getting a month's notice, right? So, um, so we were able to change that. I mean, that's a really incredible and important role to, to have that direct of an impact on people's lives. Excellent. Um, yeah, that's a great example. Um, so final question is, is there something that you heard the other of you say today that you would think you may wanna try in your work? So was there something that one of you mentioned um, that you think could be important to explore in the community that you're working in. Jesse Slava, did you, did you, hopefully you understand the question. Did you hear something that Commissioner Navarro said that might inspire you to try to explore something new in the community where you're working? Wonderful. And Commissioner Navarro, did you hear something that Slava said that you think, oh, we should think about doing that here. Yeah, I'm always interested. We actually have an international um, project right now with um, some folks in the city of Torino in Italy. And um, I'm, I'm always interested in how we're so immersed in kind of the way that we address affordable housing in this country, that our, our particular funding sources and the limits that come with them and so on that um, it's so helpful to me to hear how people with completely different systems kind of could we adopt some of the those ways of development or um, ways of funding things that just kind of break out of the models we get pretty enmeshed in and kind of stop thinking creatively. So um, I, I'm very grateful for that. Well, I want to thank you both um, for your remarks and sharing about the work that you've been doing. And I'm going to turn it over uh, back to Drew. Thanks so much, Heather. And I want to thank all of our panelists, our speakers rather, both panelists and moderator, for today's conversation. 
We hope that through the presentations, you've gained a better understanding of the goals of the We Will Chicago Citywide Plan and what it can accomplish. The next part of our program will include some polling where you can provide feedback on the plan's draft objectives and goals that we've learned little about today. For the remainder of our time together, we'd like to engage in an activity using the, Men using the tool Menti to see what you think about the draft housing and neighborhoods goals and objectives that we've discussed. All the feedback that is captured via the polling will be provided back to the city of Chicago to help inform changes to the draft framework. We will be remaining in the webinar format for this activity, but if you have questions, please continue to use the Q&A box and we will send out answers after the event. You can also send an email to wewill at cityofchicago.org. Once again, that's wewill at cityofchicago.org because we're using the Menti online today. This will not be a conversational session. For those interested in having conversations about these goals or sharing their broader visions, we urge you to join for the upcoming in-person events across the city. Check out the schedule at www.wewillchicago.org. Once again, that's www.wewillchicago.org. Uh, we're gonna transition now a little bit. This is all in the ad lib version uh, section of the whole uh, meeting today. I'm gonna try to be a little less formal uh, and help everybody walk through this uh, engagement format. So if you haven't used Menti before, please don't be intimidated. All you need to do is point your smartphone at that QR code, use your camera, and then a little link is gonna pop up and it's gonna get you right into uh, the, the, the survey format. Um, you can also just visit www.menti.com and enter the code 68467413. Once again, that's www.menti.com and enter the code 68467413. So I think we'll go ahead and advance. Uh, and, you know, maybe we'll just give it a second, actually, because there's a lot of people that are on this webinar. And as we watch that little ticker with the thumbs up flying across the screen, that tells us how many folks have actually gotten here. So we want to make sure that as many folks as possible can get in uh, to the polling. And, and I promise you, once you do it, it's the most intuitive thing you've ever done. Um, you can also uh, click, make sure that you click the thumbs up under the instructions when you get there so that we know that you've arrived. Uh, thanks. Once again, once you've either used the QR code and got to the link directly, or you've visited the website and entered the numeric code on the left, just hit the thumbs up code, uh, the thumbs up under instructions. You'll go to the instructions menu and click thumbs, the thumbs up icon there, uh, and that'll let us know that you're in. Uh, so we're just going to give it a second or two to make sure that as many people as possible are getting in. Good. I can see that my verbal gymnastics have gotten through to more people recently. I'm sorry. Um, again, we'll wait a couple more seconds. Um, if you pull out your smartphone, uh, pull up the camera and use the QR code. That's that funny looking uh, graphic on the right. Uh, you'll get a link. You'll click that link in your camera and it'll automatically toggle over to your web browser on your smartphone. Uh, and then once you get there, make sure that you click the thumbs up under instructions or you can go to www.menti.com and enter the code on your left here, which is 6846-7413. Once again, that's 6846-7413. Okay. All right, so what we wanna do now is sort of go through the goals that we talked about at the beginning of that one Sebastian rather talked about at the beginning of the session and sort of get a sense of uh, how much you agree with this first goal, which is preserve and increase affordable quality and accessible housing choices for all. And you can use your mentee polling function uh, again in your web browser that hopefully many of you are in now. Uh, and you can select anywhere between strongly disagree, which would be a number one, to strongly agree, which would be a number five, anywhere along that spectrum would be lovely. And I'm just gonna be looking at the little counter that you can see in the lower right-hand corner before we move on, because again, we wanna make sure as many folks as possible are able to participate in the polling. So far, it looks like this particular goal is resonating with folks, so that's great to hear. But we really wanna capture, like I said, as much feedback as possible. So 
Okay. So we're, I'm going to be looking for folks uh, to get sort of somewhere in the upper 60s or the mid 60s. Um, I think we had about 70 plus folks uh, that were on board and we know that people have lots of lots of constraints on their time. So we certainly understand, um, but we really do want to encourage you to participate in this uh, polling opportunity right now. So since we're about stable at 66, I'm going to go ahead and ask that we advance to the next question. All right, so under goal one, there are a series of objectives. And so what you wanna do, again, is to see how strongly you agree or disagree with any of these objectives. So I'll go ahead and read them aloud and you should be seeing a fairly similar screen on your smartphone or on your computer uh, in your web browser as you're going through this. Wow, great, those are jumping along. Um, so again, the, the first objective is preserve and maintain existing affordable housing across all, I should say 77 community areas, it's fine. Um, I'm sure that we can all figure that out on our own. Um, the second uh, objective is develop a wide range of housing units affordable res for residents at all incomes in all 77 community areas. The third is expand housing assistance for marginalized residents, especially very low income residents and people with disabilities. And the fourth is ensure housing is accessible for people with disabilities or can be adapted to meet their needs. You should be able to enter a number somewhere between one and five for each of those objectives. Uh, strongly disagree being one and strongly agree being five and everything in the middle is a gradation between the two. We know that some of these things can be nuanced uh, and that your ideas can be very different uh, for each one of them and that's great. Uh, I'm seeing again that fairly universally people seem to resonate with these four objectives and we're climbing slowly to the number of, of participants that we're sort of looking to see. So again, we understand that everybody's busy, but we do want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to participate. Yeah, they're, these are very close together too. So I, I think we're just looking for a little dynamic there, but it looks like maybe the strongest is going to be are going to be the last two, uh, and the second maybe is a little slightly lower in terms of how how much folks agree, but still solidly in the agree range above three. Okay, I think we're going to move on since we're about stable at the last uh, count that we had in the previous slide. So what we want to do now is sort of dive a little deeper, and this will be your opportunity to make some comments. Um, we want to ask you in this part of the, of the poll to tell us, what do you like about this goal and objective? So just to be clear, we're going to get to both sides. We're going to ask for positives and, and critiques. But for right now, we'd love to hear some of the positive things that you may be seeing resonate with you in each of these, uh, in, the, in the previous goal and its objectives. There really isn't uh, any uh, constraint that we want to give you on any of these uh, particular uh, bits of feedback. So anything that's coming to mind uh, in terms of what you see as positive aspects of the objectives and the goal that we just talked about would be welcome. So thank you to folks that are uh, getting through accessibility, I'm seeing. It includes preserving and building and mentions the needs of the disadvantaged. Great. Someone is advocating to save three and two and three flat units. That's super helpful. Folks are commenting around housing as an entitlement and these objectives get closer to that, go closer to that. I love the stability comments around stable neighborhoods. I'm glad that uh, someone else is bringing up fair housing, a subject that's near and dear to many of our hearts. Um, Definitely some finance folks uh, doing the polling right now, talking about the ability to utilize the resources we have and rework existing capital, as well as create things that are new. I do wanna make sure uh, that folks know I'm not trying to pick favorites or spotlight anything in particular right now. I don't have an agenda here. Uh, I'm just trying to call out some of the things and encourage folks to participate. We are saving all of these. All of these bits of feedback will make their way to the city of Chicago and especially to the Department of Housing. Folks are calling out that segregation in the city is being addressed. 
an appreciation for the explicit focus on equity, including again, calling out and naming particular vulnerable populations that need specific assistance. It's great. It's interesting that I, I see someone calling out the comparative affordability of Chicago looking at other major US cities and that there's a real opportunity there uh, in terms of preserving that uh, middle class stability, although we all know that it sort of varies widely, widely across the city. Talking about affordable housing is a right. Uh, I'll say uh, someone is saying that they like the preservation of naturally occurring affordable housing. It's one of those acronyms, NOAA, that some of us wonks like to use. Um, and another person is sort of indicating that it resonates with them that all 77 community areas are identified uh, in several places and that it's uh, helpful to make sure that we're thinking about strategies that may be different in each place, but, but are, are, are furthering the overall goal. Another call out for preservation. These are all great. I, I do want to keep these comments coming. They're super helpful. Accessible, affordable, and attractive housing without displacement. Focus on people uh, who are disadvantaged and people with disabilities. I love the question, who gets to afford the city of Chicago? That's great. And who gets to decide? And the notion of having strategies for all communities is positive, but someone is saying they think they're clueless about what are the costs, uh, what, about what are cost efficient market effective strategies in different kinds of communities. And maybe with that, it's a, give it a couple more seconds and, and perhaps it's a good idea to transition to the next slide with that one. People are talking about mixed income living, ADA accessibility. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and transition to asking you to think a little bit about Goal three, oh, sorry, sorry, we're not there yet. <laughs> now we're gonna ask everyone uh, to go ahead and give any critiques that you may have. What's missing about, about this goal and its objectives? What would you change? What's missing? Are there things that you would change? Again, this is a fill in the blank. You can type whatever you think is appropriate. I'll call out a few as we move through this phase of the polling for sure. We haven't lost too many people. Can you tell us about what is missing from this goal and its objectives? What would you change? Wow, nothing. There's a, there's a point here on measurable outcomes. I think that that's something that we're gonna be talking more uh, as the plan rolls out about uh, and in maybe subsequent conversations, but I think that's a really helpful point. Focus on veterans, it's insightful. Timelines, uh, I'm assuming that maybe means for realizations of some of the objectives, that's helpful. Thinking about how to incorporate non-formal leaders into the creation of an accountability to goals, that's helpful, the shared responsibility. Someone talking about how naturally for according for housing may not be high quality. That's a, helpful to understand. I think that's a great nuance. Um, Long-term affordability, rent control, property taxes, some of these other devices that we haven't really touched on today, sort of thinking about how to make sure that we address those or find ways to incorporate them. Some interest in a little bit more clarity and specificity about the process to get to some of these objectives. Uh, an explicit focus on production of affordable housing in majority white community areas. Um, do a quick call out to maybe think about how to follow up on that in terms of the affordable requirements ordinance that uh, has been evolving over the past few years. Uh, need to call out deeply affordable housing as an aspect and add the importance of corresponding services that's discussed on the panel. So thinking about how do we balance affordable housing in geographies where amenities uh, align with what people need. Uh, need to think about 
we need to think through how to navigate the tension between preserving existing naturally affordable housing, naturally occurring affordable housing and increasing density and diversity of housing options and impact of teardowns on affordability. Uh, someone saying landlord protections. How can more communities become engaged and have ownership with the process? Connections to other resources for quality of life, education, employment, et cetera. Thinking about how to do more than just increase the number of units, but also housing units, but also actively support housing needs in other ways. How to balance mixed rate housing, mixed income housing. Okay, I think it's probably time to move on to the next goal and the next question. Awesome. So we're moving now to goal three, um, which is attract and retain residents and increase density to strengthen neighborhood vibrancy, especially on the south and west sides. So again, we're going to ask you to indicate what your uh, agreement level is with this particular goal. Uh, number one would be strongly disagree and number five would be strongly agree. There's all kinds of gradations in between there. Again, we're asking for you to select the extent to which you agree with goal number three, which is attract and retain residents and increase density to strengthen neighborhood vibrancy, especially on the south and west side. Give it a couple more seconds. We wanna make sure that folks ideally can end today at around one o'clock. You know that everyone's time is very busy, especially at this time in the summer. Uh, and it is a beautiful day outside. I'll note that in the city of Chicago. Um, great. Maybe wait for a couple of more. Again, it seems like we're in the agree zone for sure. Um, at around 4.3, which is somewhere between four and five, which is the highest level of agreement that we could get. All right, it looks like we're stable. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask to move on to the next question. Again, so these are objectives that would be contributing to the fulfillment of goal number three. Uh, so we're gonna ask you to indicate on a scale of one to five with one being strongly disagree and five being strongly agree, how you feel about each of these objectives. And you should be seeing an interface somewhat similar to this on your phone, great. We're seeing some indications, all five, we'd love to see that. Um, the first is update the city's rules and regulations to support increased equitable development. The second is focus future growth and density in and around transit hubs, key commercial corridors and or anchors. Third is prioritize development of vacant land and buildings. The fourth is strengthen and anchor neighborhood-based developers, especially those that are small, medium-sized and led by black, Latino, native, Asian, and immigrant people, enhance public spaces, schools, parks, services, and public infrastructure in underserved communities. So there are five objectives under this goal. It looks like, again, we're in that four range, which is great with possibly the fifth objective being the strongest in agreement so far, which is enhance public spaces, schools, parks, services, and public infrastructure in underserved communities. And maybe uh, two and three being sort of slightly lower, but again, all very positive right now. And again, we'll try to wait till we see about 60 folks respond. It's where we've been stable for the last few minutes. It seems like we're might have a couple more people. Again, we want to encourage as many folks as possible to participate in this. This is one way that we're looking at how to evaluate the draft framework of the We Will Chicago plan before any revisions are made. I think just in the interest of time, we'll go to the next slide. And this time, again, we're going to be asking you to weigh in about what you like about this goal and its objectives. 
Again, the goal is attract and retain residents and increase density to strengthen neighborhood vibrancy, especially on the south and west sides. So think about what you might like about that objective, uh, that what about that goal and the objectives that we just talked about. And this is just a fill in the blank. Uh, you know, we definitely want to see as many comments as possible. I do want to keep us moving along, so I probably won't read as many as I have been uh, in the past two. My apologies. Just want to make sure that everybody gets in their comments regardless. It includes infrastructure beyond just building affordable units. That's great. Increasing the quality of community assets. When calling out that race is a strong factor here. South and west sides are uh, that, that there's disinvestments on the south and west sides, and that this focus really should support overcoming those harms. An approach to parks and public spaces. There's an attention to growth. A priority on increasing density. There's some tension there around density in general. I think that's good to sort of elevate for the purpose of a dialogue. Supporting and anchoring historically more marginalized communities and prioritization of including social services, apropos to our discussion today. I think we're gonna to need to move on before too long, but I really just wanna encourage as many folks as possible to get those comments in. more shout outs for density, more shout outs for focusing on the south and west sides. A call out to public space as being very important to these strategies. A focus on reinvestment and livability. Okay, I think, again, just in the interest of time, we're going to go ahead and move to the last question for today in the polling. What is missing from this goal and its objectives? What would you change? Feel free to type in your comments as soon as you're able. Again, the goal to review it is attract and retain residents and increase density to strengthen neighborhood vibrancy, especially on the south and west side. What do you think is missing there? Uh, there needs to be some exp uh, explicitness about calling out displacement and avoiding gentrification. A question about conflating density and diversity. Uh, CHA vouchers being a part of that solution. Uh, some specifics. I will just reiterate, uh, just being able to read off the, the, the objectives, I wasn't able to do that. Um, but there are some specifics under the goal that I just read. Um, more connection to other topics like transportation and employment. Some clear changes that would enable more density. Right, it seems like details is sort of a, a coalescence point here uh, among a lot of folks so far. I'm gonna give a, a mother minute or so and make sure that ideally everyone can get their comments in. What other city resources will be needed? Uh, in the chat, I'll note that we are asking folks to fill out a survey uh, to let us know what you thought of the event. And I'll say a few words about that too, but also just wanna make sure that people are entering their last bits of uh, feedback on what's missing around this goal and its objectives. What would you change? The focus on services I'm seeing, uh, focus on climate resilience, that's helpful. There is another pillar in the plan where those strategies will be, but, uh, and I would encourage you to go uh, RSVP for that event uh, and be a part of that. Thinking about measures, cooperative ownership, that also came up in the Q&A. Uh, we'll try to make sure that we address that in a follow-up. July 28th is actually the environment and energy, uh, the environment, energy and climate pillar event. So please head up wewillchicago.org uh, and make sure that you're 
uh, RSVPing for that event. We want to make sure that we get as many folks as possible into that as well. Okay. Again, just in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and transition to closing. I think we're going to keep scrolling through some of these. So if you'd like to read them as they pop up, you certainly can. Uh, but in the interest of time and, and respecting everyone's time, I want to thank everyone for coming today and sharing your feedback. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. We'd also like to hear from you about today's event. So please fill out the survey. Again, the link is in the chat to let us know how we can improve these events in the future and any additional input you may want to provide on We Will Chicago. We just want to say thanks again to everyone. Uh, Thanks again to our team of interpreters. Thanks to our moderator. Thanks to our panelists. Thanks to our City of Chicago staff. Uh, we're very, very grateful for everyone's time and participation today. <laughs> if you have any questions, you can always email wewill at cityofchicago.org as well. Heather saying in English, thank you, Desi Slava, for joining us. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't tell if we're still live, but can I get all the interpreters? The honor is all ours. Thank you so much. <laughs>